Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 44 of Podcast of Five Rings, your source of enlightenment in the realm of video games, tabletop, anime, film, and tech. Each episode of Podcast of Five Rings releases Monday mornings on iTunes and SoundCloud, and now topic by topic, day by day on YouTube, with the full video releasing on Friday. Catch updates about the podcast or for other news, give us a follow on your social media platform of choice listed in the description below. I'm your GM. I'm your host. I'm your overseer of Podcast of Five Rings Obsidian. And I am joined to not by the same old, same old. We'll never have anyone new on here. <laughs> you you know who it is by now. We've got the wall yeah. that will not fall, Tetsuo. Is that a promise? I, I swear to you. I will never, never die. Fall. The Dark Fortune Duelist meta. <laughs> That's disgusting. I had to get Team... I'm going to quit right now. Team America I'm quit. My, you've got... I'm here my two weeks notice. <laughs> no! <laughs> That was disgusting. And the resident again. wildcard mail. Yo. What's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm with you, man. You know what? I've That's been doing fine. all week sleeping and playing Kingdom Hearts. What the fuck? Are you off this week or something? No, I haven't been off. But when I got home, I've been playing Kingdom Hearts for like two or three hours and passing out for like ten every <laughs> night, so... <laughs> I see. Yeah. Classic maneuvers. Yeah, I know. I mean, I talked really about it. Overtime. You're getting overtime. It's money. Yeah. Ah, it's for- money, money. It's good money, man. Then when I'm at home. So. Yeah, you you make me jelly wanting those meatballs that you posted the other day. Yeah, they were so good. They were good. Really good. I have three left over, and they're probably gonna go in a pub sub. Yeah, I need to try that eventually. That recipe. <laughs> Those barbecue pit boys, man. Yeah. That's Tetsuo Shokugeki no Soma since he refuses to watch it. That's what he said, basically. You shouldn't oh watch that God. either. Because the reason why I don't watch Shokugeki no Soma is this is already prevalent when I watch uh, barbecue pit boys because I would have no money whatsoever <laughs> because I will go buy the ingredients to try to cook everything that I see that looks tasty in that show. It all oh, looks tasty. You That's might have a little difficulty with some of those ingredients. Sure, there's enough in there that will still keep my wallet empty. <laughs> Here's some buffalo brisket. Wild bear. Actually, my, Publ- <laughs> my Publix does sell um, buffalo. Oh, nice. Have you ever gotten it before? There. I've never had buffalo. Uh, it's all right. I don't love yeah. it. Oh man. Well, so what are we doing here, Obs? Let's uh, let's get right into things. We're gonna do something different tonight. Um, almost like we did back when we did our E3 episode, where we just kind of splattered on the wall well this is really different than e3 uh we've got our monthly module for this weekend coming up where we're going to be playing exalted second edition and if you don't it's a white wolf game to the nth degree um (laughs) it's got a lot of crunch it kind of takes a long time to make a character it's not something like l5 i can literally make an l5r character in like five minutes oh yeah Uh, D &D character i can make one pretty quick too uh exalted takes a little bit of time so we were like i didn't really have a topic the other guys did so i was, I was like let's make exalted characters for the podcast this week and see how it goes i like how you ounced yourself right away like none of us were gonna backstab you and you're like Let me myself <laughs> everyone else did what their job and prepared and i was like i haven't been doing anything i've been playing kingdom hearts all week and i've talked about that last week so you can talk about one it week when I actually have something I ahead know. of time, and <laughs> just back so, pocket it. Just back pocket it. <laughs> Otherwise, it was going to be that uh, for me that uh, uh, Detroit is coming out. It got a release date, or uh, oh, wow. was going to be uh, the Avengers has moved up a week. Yeah, that's all the big news so I saw. Done. Yeah, because yeah, Robert Downey Jr. was like, "Hey, can we move it up a week?" And they were like, sure. So they did. So it's coming out at the same time that it would in Europe, which is cool. But anyways, uh, yeah, so for those who don't know, I guess I'll do like a brief introduction into what Exalted is. I think I've talked about it on the podcast before. But yeah, anyways, have. Um, Exalted is a White Wolf game. So the character sheets look a lot like a typical White Wolf character sheet would. Uh, the The setting is very... Chinese slash Roman slash Wuxia slash anime slash vid- video games slash what it, throw everything at the kitchen sink. You're like high fantasy, 
what have you. It, it Exalted takes it basically references and borrows from it. You're you're kind of the chosen hero of deities in the setting who a long time ago overthrew Titans who created what is generically called creation. And um the the uh the solar exalted, which is what the PCs will be being, the type of exalted they are, serve the unconquered sun, uh who's who is basically like the leader of the gods who helped them rise up against the Titans, your Zeus or what have you. And um <clears throat> eventually his chosen servants that he bestowed his power upon were overthrown by a group of exalted called the Terrestrial Exalted who get their powers from the elemental dragons and uh, were hunted down to extinction and their mates ran off into the wilderness and vanished into nowhere. Gone evil though. The solar. Yeah. The solar were cursed. Uh, they had they put they had a curse put on them. Where basically they would just be consumed with their power and vanity and what have you and kind of go insane. So there you go, and that was like thousands of years ago, and now as far as creation's concerned, the the solars and all their brethren of the other exalted tops are anathema or demons and are and they hunted were, down. They well, they uh, they also made it so that they couldn't be reborn yep. into a jade prison. Yep, a lot of their essences and uh, were locked into a jade prison under the sea, and where they could not escape, and uh, so they could not, their souls could not be pushed back into the karmic cycle and reincarnated. Because when one exalted dies. Basically, their exaltation leaves their body and goes to another person worthy of carrying on that legacy. That's how is the idea. So we're going to make characters uh, starting Ooh. right now. So uh, I've limited the group to three cases. So the first thing you kind of need to do is pick your case, which is what, what kind of kind of guidelines you're going to fall under. It's a lot like a, uh, a class probably in D&D, essentially. Um, so you guys will be choosing between the Dawn case, which is your warrior general top, the Knight case, which is your stealthy, sneaky assassin thief cop top, and the Zenith case, which is your priestly, like, charismatic, uh, presence guy, in a way, so. You mean cast? Case, cast, whatever. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> I, uh... I may have already built for Dawn. <laughs> so, I just skipped right over to the creation. I was like, mm, what do I need to do with these things? <laughs> All right. So if you want to be the Dawn case, write down Dawn case or top it in on your, on your thing. Dawn. Dawn and Dawn. I made him very Dawn. Uh, do you have a preference, Tets? Um, I'll do night, I guess. Okay. So that leaves me with Venus. Yep, Zenith is a... Uh, Mal gets to be the tanky, tough guy, potentially. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, just just mark that down. Uh, go ahead and fill in uh, the marks under your abilities. All those are favored. So that would so, be the box. Uh, yes, that, that's the... the box to the left of it. You want to fill all those in. Basically, you get, like, an XP. It's, it's cheaper to raise those after character creation and stuff like that. And it's also cheaper to buy charms that are your favorite charms. You'll also get the opportunity to pick skills outside your case that are favored too, but we'll get that in a little bit. Yep, so fill all those in. You'll also get a, a case-specific um, ability, but we'll get to that later as well when we start when we look at charms. Okay, uh, motivation we'll skip for now because you don't really probably have a complete grasp of what your character's defining trait will be. You come up with one, go ahead and kind of like jot it down. It's basically like your uh, your Geary in L five R. It's like what your character wants the most. Oh, I know it already. Yeah, and, already and concept is kind of <laughs> if concept would be like general or uh, yeah, there's it's on uh, or, or or page eighty eight and eighty nine. Yeah, your motivation is important because if someone tries to get you to act against your motivation, you can use your virtues to like basically buff your roles more easily and stuff. So it does matter. Yes. Examples are killing the dragon blooded trap of the threshold kingdom or protecting a single town from all harm. Yep. So if someone was like, abandon your town, do this instead, you could go like, no, fuck you. <laughs> so, this is my motivation. This is my motivation. It's actually like that. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly how you're all way at, dude. 
Okay, so now we're going to choose attributes. Uh, this works like Wat Wolf games where you have your tiers of them uh, that you're going to pick. Uh, each do each attribute has an automatic one in it. It should already be marked on your sheet. Mm. Um, you get let's see here, uh, da -da, eight dots on amongst your primary, six dots amongst your secondary, and four dots amongst your tertiary. So strength, dex, and stamina are one. Charisma, manipulation, appearance, perception, intelligence, wits. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um. Stamina will help your soak, so if you want to be tougher, have a higher stamina. Dex is always your hit rolls. Strength will add to your damage on your weapons. Charisma. Are these capped? Uh, these are not capped. That's We're capped at, at five. Capped at five. You can't go above five. Well, I'm, uh, are they not capped at like three or something for character creation? No, they're not. Okay. I was gonna say whatever you choose for your starting one, you wouldn't be able to spend yeah, the eight. primary all the way. Yeah, you eight. You eight. wouldn't. You'd have leftovers. Uh, so, uh, charisma is obviously, like, talking, uh, but manipulation is, Char charisma is more like your presence. It's, it's not like charisma is in D&D, &D, where it affects every talking skill. It's kind of just, like, your natural, like, machismo in a way, whereas manipulation is more like actually getting people to, like, do stuff in a way. Um, it's not necessarily always devious. Appearance is just how attractive you are. Uh, the higher appearance you have, the easier it is to influence people as well. It like makes your uh, success rate lower. Um, wow. So if you want to be a hot boy or hot woman, <laughs> there you go. Uh, perception is your uh, noticing the world around you. Intelligence is intelligence, and wits is like how quickly you think. So it's more like it's like wisdom essentially for D and D. Wits will. The important thing about wits is it affects your initiative. So if you kind of want to be like a super fast guy, wits is a good one to have. So question. Yeah, go ahead. Eight six uh, four. Eight six four. How much, how much does dexterity and strength differ in combat as opposed to non combat? Dex is hitting people. Strength is the damage you do. Ah. Uh, so that's not like D and D where you use strength for some weapons to hit. Strength will always add, unless you use like a bow, strength will always add to your damage if you mm -hmm. hit someone with a melee weapon. Dex is always hitting someone, so you generally want to have a good dex. Everybody probably wants at least a three. And then stamina, I'm guessing, is like your kind of your health and whatnot. Stamina is not your health. Uh, stamina oh. is your soak. Built-in uh, armor, basically. Yeah, essentially. You'll get uh -huh. that, you get to, you, as an exalted, you get to add your stamina... Your full stamina to your bashing, and I think half to your lethal. We'll get to that when we do drive stats. So it's good. It's also like resisting poison and like that stuff too. Running long distance. Dude, you get eight six four, right? Eight six four. I think I'm going physical, mental, social. All right. That's kind of that's kind of how I went to physical, mental, social. What are you doing, Mal? I don't know yet. Yeah, um, I think that's usually something, somewhere around there is what I usually do. I think, actually, most of the time I usually did Mental Lois. I was like the two characters I've made for this game. <laughs> I was just like, two perception, two int, three wits. There we go. I know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just going to do something really stupid. I want to stick with it. <laughs> Sounds good. Nothing is stupid. I swear to God, if you just, co I swear to God, if you just copied what I did. <laughs> Oh, and you oh. have the same stats. What? <laughs> yeah, you'll get you'll get freebie yeah. points at the end. You can use to raise these even more. So hold on a second. I got. I'm gonna type it out. Don't. I don't want to say it for the for uh, the viewers in the game, but I'm gonna type it out. <laughs> <laughs> Just be stupid. <laughs> uh, did you do that? <laughs> did you do something similar to that? Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, I'm in the same thing. <laughs> uh, oh. I, I, I momentarily did, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of my social, though. Is that bad? You know what? Hey, man, there you go. Really? I'll be damned. Good. It's good. It's yep, good. just let me know when you guys are all chosen. I we'll, am we'll, say what we, we'll say what we got. 
you, go ahead yeah. and you can go ahead and read what you what you have. Okay. You uh, I just put five for strength, four for dex, two for stamina. Um, that's my primary. My secondary, I actually chose as my more intelligence one. I have four perception, one intelligence, four. <laughs> <laughs> Meta gets to play the meat stick finally. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Uh, and then my uh, last one is uh, uh, the charismatic one, um, which is I just chose charisma as three, manipulation one, appearance three. <laughs> there you go. I just wanted to play a Goku. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and one is below average, two is average, three is above average, obviously, four is like one of the best of the best, and five is like you're one of the best in the world at it, so. Nice. Well, I mean... Part of my statement a moment ago was true, because primary is uh, strength 3, dex 3, stamina 5, great. perception 4, intelligence 1, wits 4. <laughs> no one has intelligence. <laughs> we'll just change how Mal builds his, builds his guy. I kind of want us all to be very... Are we all going to be, like, mentally handicapped? <laughs> Within my, uh, my tertiary social charisma two manipulation one appearance four. There you go. So at least he has rugged good looks. There you he's go. Good... He, he's got a roguish handsomeness about him. I like the I would be like opposite of us. <laughs> he's like the most mentally prepped person. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know how I want to do this. Uh, I just... yeah, I'll do primary will be mental and then. Uh, physical and social, so we'll have crappy social skills. Okay. But at least I'll be smarter than them. Eek! <laughs> Alright, you got what you want your loadout to be yet? Uh, let's see. I am a witty person. My intelligence mm -hmm. is lacking. Oh, my, <laughs> why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> my... Why, PDF? Why? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, like, did a weird box around... I think. Um, let's see. Was it eight? So, hmm, what do I do? I want. What do I want my, my best mental stat to be? That one. It's <laughs> a good one. Yeah, yeah like that's a good one. one. Yeah, I like that. Which one? one? What? What are they uh, useful for again? Okay. Uh, the mental perception. perception is perceiving the world around you. Um. Right. Intelligence is obviously intelligence, and which is more like wisdom. So it's like thinking quick. If you aren't sure, we can all you can always like change them around later on. Yeah, too. I might change them a bit at the moment. I've got um, once you start looking at the charm loadout you want, then you can probably right. like, manipulate them. All right, yeah, I've got <laughs> all my physical are three. All right, and then my social is three charisma, two manipulation, and two appearance. All right, and then I've got four perception, three intelligence, and four wits. Nice. nice. All right. Next, we go to abilities. Um, they're rated from one to five dots. You can't start above a three until you use bonus points later. So just FYI. Um, it resulted as a natural thing with abilities by their case, uh, blah, blah, blah. Resulted also have an affinity with certain skills beyond their case abilities called favor abilities. So you can select five abilities to be your character's favorite abilities that are not the the abilities that are under your case. You see, that see, aren't, so you yeah. can't choose your ca cast ones. Yeah, you get your cased ones for free, then you get five past that. Oh, I see. So, the stuff you want to be good in. Archery is obviously shooting a bow and arrow. Martial arts is hand-to-hand -hand combat, or mar there are certain weapons that you can use for martial arts charms as well. well other ones fall under melee. Thrown is thrown weapons like daggers, chakram, stuff like that, and war is battle, and commanding troops in battle. Integrity is sticking to your guns, obviously. Performance is any kind of art skill. Presence is, um, like, your general, like, cold charisma. Like, your ability to just walk into a room and kind of, like, get its attention is presence. Resistance is resisting po poison. Uh, it's also important if you want to get more health levels to get a few ranks in resistance. Um, survival is obvious. Survival stuff, like any game. Craft is craft like any game. Investigation is investigation like any game. Um, lore is lore like any game, but it's it's more just anything uh, other than occult, which is its own skill. And medicine is medicine stuff. Hint, don't buy medicine. The charms suck. 
Uh, <laughs> just telling you. Don't watch all the waste thoughts. I, I appreciate the heads up. <laughs> yeah, athletics. Yeah, it's really hard. You kind of just heal naturally in this game. There is no like direct heal charm or anything like that. Hmm. Athletics hmm. is um, athletics like any game. Awareness is literally noticing things. Dodge is dodging uh, blows. It'll affect your dodge value. Uh, but you, there's the way co- combat works is you can pretty much dodge any attack. Unless you, like, fall into a volcano, then you can't use your dodge DV against, like, the volcano's lava. Can I use uh, resistance versus the volcano's lava? Yes, you can. <laughs> um, you can just be, like, tough and resist, like, the damage the lava would give to you. You also awesome. you can also use your like a- attack yeah. skill as, a, as it becomes your parry defensive value. So there's you can't, like, parry, like, some stuff that are, like, super huge, but you can parry, like, a, uh, like, generally any, like, weapon attack or stuff yeah, like that. I remember uh, Scion being similar. Yeah. So parrying yeah, is the easiest yeah, one to yeah. get up, but it has the most limitations. Dodge is, is also good to have, but you can't dodge everything. Resistance is just good in general, um, but it doesn't affect your like defensive value, so it's still easy to get hit. And some charms so, do will do stuff like double damage to us and stuff like that, so you can't always just soak through everything. Uh, so yeah, that's what dodge is. Larceny is general like skullduggery and thievery. Stealth is sneaking. Bureaucracy is maneuvering through like the red tape of various courts and societies. Linguistics is literally how many languages you can speak. Also, don't buy that. Ride is riding stuff like a horse. Sail is, is sailing ships and eventually airships when your characters get them and stuff. And socialize is your generic like uh, social attack skill. You can also get specialties. One dot spent will get you a specialty, which is just like a focus within a skill that you use for the one specific thing. And for each dot you put in, you get two dots of specialty. And they max out at three. Um, so uh, the right, number so of dots like... you get... Oh, sorry. Uh, no, yeah, my bad. Sorry. Uh, you get ten ability dots to assign amongst your case and favored abilities for free. And then another 18 dots afterwards. First pick the other five that you want. And so, favorite abilities, does that actually, like, does that have any sort of thing yes. outside of character building? Like, um, Later on, when you spend XP, you spend less to increase your favorite abilities. I see. And it also costs less to buy charms that you have a favorite ability in. Wow. So, it's it's very important in the long run. Not as much so, for, like, a one-shot, but... Yeah, I mean, I might need to look at the charms to finalize them then, yeah. but... So so maybe just like if you're not sh- there's probably like a few you know you want and if there's like a few you can just like yeah like keep them in everyone mind. should probably well I mean uh, so meta gets them all but me and Tet should probably at least have a attack yeah you uh, want skill. you want one of the dawn ones obviously yeah. um I'm not sure if I want to take martial arts or melee which one I like better for, I uh, took all the martial arts and all the melee <laughs> <laughs> oh no what am I gonna use. <laughs> You can have archery, throne, or war. <laughs> throne and which archery not, are also good. Which They're all I good. Say right, which I'm saying right now, I have put nothing into. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I would say martial arts is probably the worst out of core book. It gets better with splat books when they start right. making busted martial arts trees. So, I mean, depending on what weapon you use, will be either martial arts or melee. Yeah, that too. Like, if you use, like, a bow staff and stuff, then... What if I just wanted to punch things really, really hard? Martial arts. Yeah. Yep. That would be martial arts. <laughs> we have ten to uh, do between. Um... Yeah, you get ten free dots in your favored and cased abilities. More dots. And, yeah, and then More you dots. get eight, eighteen dots after that. Oh God. And you and, and your max is three in any oh rank God. right now. You can buy four later on when you get your freebie three. points after we're done making the characters completely. Five, six, seven. I think I might do archery. Archery is good, and it's also something I never see Zenith take. They're always martial artists, <laughs> from my experience. Yeah, I want to use guns. <laughs> there are guns. I know fire sticks. Yep. You can totally get get I'm that. I'm gonna hold off on spending my last couple points in those until I can look at like the stuff to decide if I want martial arts or melee. Yep, that's fine. All right. Everybody probably wants at least a three in whatever they're going to fight with. So. It's like, how, how do you want to fight? How do you want to dodge or or 
be defensive, pick those, and then uh, find out how tough you want to be, and then you can kind of like specialize from there. So. All right. Yep, just let me know when y'all get those, like, the ones you picked, the ones you're not sure of, and then we can move on to the next part. Yeah. Uh, where's my notepad? There's my notepad. Which is where it really gets interesting. And where this section of the character creation part does not do a good job of describing. <laughs> so I will uh, scroll down. I think I have overspent somehow. Yeah. Uh -oh. 10 and 18. Yeah, I should have 28 all together. Correct. Yep. And if you want, you can save a few of those for specialties. You, oh, right. You can't, you can't spend part of that 18 in the uh, other ones, can you? You can only spend it on the ones that haven't that aren't your cast or chosen? Uh, no, you can spend those on anything. Yeah. At least, you get 28, at least 10 must be from cast for favorite abilities. Exactly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, uh... 17, 18, there we go. <laughs> I did it. You got it? I did it. All right, you guys ready to get on to the next part? Advantages. All right, advantages. So. Wait, wait, not, wait, not okay, yet. okay, not sorry, yet. sorry. Not yet. I was just saying advantages. Don't go. <laughs> Why Don't would go. you just say that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at, I'm going to look up further down the sheet here real fast. Ooh. Weapons, anima, land break, willpower, char! Charmander, yep. char! <laughs> char! <laughs> Why are you standing in the rain, Charmander? You're going to die! <laughs> Stop! Hello, darkness, my old friend! Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> oh my gosh. All these martial arts! Holy shit. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, the different. Uh, I think there's only like two in the main book, but there's a lot in this uh, interactive PDF. There's like it's probably got all of them in there. Thunderclap, rush attack, knockout blow, striking cobra technique, serpentine invasion, snake form, essence fangs and scales techniques, armor Still. penetrating fang strike, wolf flang, fang claw, neo wolf fang claw, <laughs> kamehameha yeah. wave, spirit bomb. <laughs> Those are all in there. Totally. <laughs> Kyo Ken times ten. Kyo Ken times ten. Wow, I even get Super Saiyan, really? <laughs> oh wow. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So advantages are your backgrounds and your charms and your virtues. We'll do charms later on. Um. So backgrounds are a lot like backgrounds in the White Wolf games. Uh, you've got allies, which are people who will come to your aid and tasks. Uh. Generally, like people in your background, you can count on artifact, which I said we cannot buy because uh, you'll be getting them throughout the mod. But I want more. <laughs> but I want more. <laughs> Poor Mal. Backing. I don't know what they are, but I want them. They're super <laughs> weapons and armor, Magic basically. Items. Yes. <laughs> Back, backing is is a rank of some kind in some organization. Uh, contacts are more specific people. Uh, who will give you information. You can generally like roll contacts to help find out stuff about a, a problem. Uh, cults are li literal followers that worship you and follow you around. Um, they can often become like heroic mortals and stuff that fight at your side and become badasses. Familiar is a badass cool animal companion. Uh, followers are less like worshippers and they're, they're, that's more kind of what I was describing a second ago. You can... You, you... Uh, you can start out with three before bonus points, and that gets you a hundred followers. Yeah, Influ Jesus. influence is how influential you are in the whole world. Uh, Mance is a Mance is like a special magical place where exalted kind of like often live, and they can go and like uh, put their essence there. I think you have to have Mance to get Hearthstones, which are kind of like little materia gems yes. that you use, and. Uh, they just help you get essence back faster if you have one and can get to it eas more easily. A mentor is a a powerful teacher or instructor, and resources is your wealth. So 
Let me, uh, in case you guys need those expanded said, on more, I will find that said, page. You said cult is one? Yep. Yes, you can cult have a cult. One. You can have a cult that follows uh, you. It doesn't actually, how, how much do you get? It doesn't actually show up. Yeah, yeah, seven points. PDF. Yeah, you get seven points to distribute amongst these. Max of three. Yep. Weird. Yeah, you're right. Cult doesn't show up. So I'm yeah. Gonna... It starts off with allies. Let's Weird. see. Yeah, I'm scrolling down backing now. Backing contacts, familiar. It's, yeah, it's backing cool. contacts, familiar. Yeah, it skips. I think I'm cult. taking familiar and resources as my main ones. Okay. What's well, familiar do again? You gotta love these familiar. bugs from the 2000s where stuff isn't in them that it describes. Okay, so just ignore. No, there's cult. No, I'm saying no, the on the character sheet. Oh, it's not on there. Is there room to type it in or something? Yeah, I think you can just type it in. Okay. Just leave it blank and put dots. I'm sure we'll remember that that's cult. <laughs> you can you can type it in anyway. It's not like it stops you. Yeah. I don't know where mine is on my. What do I want? So the ban the benefit of cult is every morning when you awaken, you automatically gain one additional point of temporary willpower. That's for cult one because you get like additional power from people worshiping you all over the world, essentially. Ooh, for every dot, you get an extra point of willpower. Uh, pay they're around page one eleven. I gotta come back to seventy seven. Yeah, you can always roll contacts to basically like help you find out some information about a situation. Backing is that you just know someone powerful somewhere, like in the the guild, which is just the, it's just a giant guild that spans creation that are very influential. Maybe like the leader of a certain city or settlement, or like a powerful dragon blooded lord. Well, yeah, or and you might have people working under you. Yep. Um, artifact is obviously artifact. Uh, that's what I would have chosen. Yeah, allies are uh, also more specific uh, characters. They're usually like powerful NPCs that I can use in the plot and stuff like that. Uh, they're they're always like equal power level to you generally. Each dot for each shot in this background you have to a starting level character. So you might like actually work with like a dragon blooded who doesn't believe what the order is telling everyone, or maybe you were the dragon blooded born child or something like that and became a demon and they weren't willing to like. Cut off odds with you. Yeah, uh, the, the more you have in familiar, the more powerful the familiar is. I played a Dawn case that had a five-point huh. wyvern familiar that he rode around on. It was Shit. a badass to, like, attack stuff. Yeah, five, five dots and followers gets you 10,000 followers. Mine does not have... mine. My backgrounds are all sorts of weird. Okay. Yours is probably, like, a everything sheet, because there's a... Yeah, it, I have... Uh, there's different uh, well, backgrounds for dis different case... Yeah, or exalted talks, and then or I've got mentor no, and Sifu. Solar can start with uh, start a series with the cult rating higher than two. Ah, uh, oh yeah, because Solar are like yeah, the Solars are not really openly worshipped anymore. Yeah, influences how famous you are. I yeah, got mine. Mance uh, gives you Hearthstones. Our materia. Yeah, mentor. Uh, the more dots you have, the more powerful your mentor is, basically. And resources is, is your money. Mentor 5! <laughs> <laughs> Sir, not, will not be appearing in this mod. Or is, the <laughs> or is the Twilight character, one of the two. Let's see here. Uh, his power was locked away or something. <laughs> He's trying to get it back. That's his motivation. <laughs> That's motivation. Uh, Alright, so we get seven dots and we can't go higher than three? Correct. Or unless it's the cult, apparently. Yes. Let's do here. Back. Anyone taking a cult? Yeah, I took uh, two cults, three familiar, and two followers. I have three familiar, three resources. And gonna... <laughs> so Tetsuo's else. character has no money at all. If you don't put a point in resources, you are homeless and destitute. <laughs> is what it says. His followers yeah. and cult members to provide for him whenever he enters their town. <laughs> I am totally okay with being uh, broke and destitute. <laughs> yeah, one is you just have like a hut and crappy arm. Yep. By the way, you also use your resources to get your equipment at the beginning of the game. Oh shit! So <laughs> if you want to be like the hand to hand guy, that's totally fine. You can get by with zero resources. I was gonna say. But if you want a weapon and armor, then you have to have resources. I'll, I'll see if I can get away with this bullshittery. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> All right, I know exactly. I've got, let's see here, backgrounds is finished. I think I've done my maths right. Yes, I've done my maths right. All right, cool. So what's everybody got then for their final thing? I have a rank three mentor, a two backing, one in cults, and one in mans. All right, cool. 
I've got three familiar, three wealth, and one in man. I think I'm going to stick with the three familiar, two cult, two followers. All right. Okay, now we go on to your... Um, and Mal, you want to like look up towards the top where it tells you how many of these you get? Because I'm scrolling through the book. Your virtues. Yeah, I've got that open. Okay, cool. So I think it was five points in virtues, or was it six? Oh, wait. This doesn't actually tell me. <laughs> Um, it told me the points for or the character. I had the character creation summary open, and it told yeah, me the points for other that's where stuff. I was, but not virtues. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Scrolling back up there, it just tells me what the virtues are. Look so big. Let's see. Blah 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 blah. Character creation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said you had a uh, familiar. Yep. Yeah, uh, you Kinda get to, yeah. five points in virtues. None may be higher what? than a four. Without what was spending that bonus points. What did I, I was get? making conversation while he was looking. Yeah. I was asking oh. what you're familiar was going to be. I don't know yet. All right. Uh, you get a uh, five points of virtues. I think they all begin at one. Yes, yeah, so they should all have a dot already filled in. And none can be higher than a four. Uh, so they're pretty self-explanatory. This is also important because your highest one uh, becomes your like flaw you would, you'll pick a flaw eventually, which determines your... It's basically like a restriction you have, and it, it triggers your curse that was placed on the solars back in the first age. And if you keep triggering the curse, you eventually limit break, where you kind of, like, basically take whatever that virtue is to the extreme. So Valor, you might just, like, start going berserk and cutting through people. You outburst. Yeah, you'll, you'll outburst, essentially. <laughs> uh, temperance is self-control. Conviction is, like, how you stick to your guns, obviously. I think it's also important for social combat, typically. They all kind of are, to be honest with you. Compassion is your empathy and stuff, and valor is obvious, like valor. Where does it, or where? how many points you get? You get five dots. Where does it tell you that? On page 84, step four, advantages. Choose seven. Oh, it's in advantages. You have seven backgrounds, ten charms, and five points of virtues and then you'll pick your virtue flaw so while you guys think about those i will find the section on virtue flaw also you kind of uh, don't want to disperse these because you will sum the two highest of your virtues and that will be your starting willpower laws are on uh 103 104 gotcha yes. although these are Can't just called samples so i guess can you you, you can, can make, make your, your own, own and stuff yeah. too probably just easier to pick a sample one yeah what page was it 103 this is where they, or well, I guess 104 is really where it starts. Yeah. You can always, the good thing about these as well is you can argue to me that you can use your version, virtue in a certain scenario. So what you can do is go, these monsters are attacking these people. I have like a compassion for, and I'm all about like protecting the weak is my motivation. So you can go, can I add my dots and compassion to this attack role against this guy? And I might go, sure, okay, you get, you can do that, spend a willpower point, and you can add your compassion to the roll in DOS. So, or you can go, I want to be brave and, like, hold off this monster horde, so you might get to add your valor or something. Or someone might be trying to convince you to do something, and you would argue that your temperance or conviction would keep you from doing that. So, I think, I think I'm going to put, essentially, valor over conviction. I think that's what I'm going to do. Just because you can't back down from a challenge, bro. You just can't. <laughs> no. Nope. Can't back down. You gotta fight with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, characteristic conviction one can't stomach adversity and finds hard choices difficult. Someone with a three rarely break, breaks under torture and can use dramatic measures, given no other choice. Someone with a five will endure a century of horrible torment and can unflinchingly inflict the same inflict the same upon others. Conviction aids in withstanding hardship and torture, making decisions where all options are horrific, committing atrocities to accomplish a goal, and regaining willpower. Characters must fail a conviction check to abandon a committed cause, give up in the face of hardship or disease, abandon companions in their time of need. Yeah, then temperance is all about resisting that seduction and stuff. Overcoming the effects of illusions, drugs, poisons, and mind control. Character must fail a temperance role to act honestly or show bias in a matter of importance. Overindulge in food or intoxicants. Act on thoughtless impulse. Break a sworn oath. Temperance aids in resisting temptation. Holding your temper when taunted or struck. Holding your tongue when intoxicated. Overcoming the effects of illusions, drugs, poisons, and mind control. 
Valor aids in heroism in battle, withstanding magically created terror, performing feats of daring and taking risks. Characters must fail a Valor roll in order to turn down a duel of honor or call to single combat, flee a battle, receive an insult without seeking retribution, or turn down a dare or challenge. Compassion aids in protecting or aiding the sick, innocent or oppressed, fighting for justice, bringing aid to the needy, fighting for or engaging in a romantic love. Characters must fail a compassion check to slay a defeated foe, ignore the pleas of the oppressed or impoverished, ignore the powerful, abusing the helpless, publicly humiliate a friend or lover. So there you go. As for your flaw, da -da -da, virtue flaw is related to your primary virtue, so your highest one typically. If they're the same, you get to pick between the two. Sample okay. compassion flaws, compassionate martyrdom. You limit break, you are overcome with the need to alleviate the suffering you witness. You throw yourself into helping the victims in the most direct fashion possible. Character limit breaks while watching an overseer beat slaves. He stands before the whip, allowing blows meant for him to come upon him instead. So you kind of like basically will lose control of your character in a scene for a brief amount of time. You can also always spend a point of willpower to ignore the effects of a limit break. Oh, that's good. I think I got my virtues in my flaw. All right, cool. What do you got? Um, I went with uh, one compassion, four temperance, three conviction, and one valor under temperance for overindulgence. So whenever he breaks, he just like. <laughs> on everything. <laughs> Give me food! I figure it goes really well with the fact that he has uh, nothing in resources. <laughs> yeah, he just like loses it and starts overindulging in everything. Mm. I'm also, going with... Oh, what? Uh, it also just makes you easily convinced to do stuff as well. It's... Character can be talked into essential duties such as pursuing enemies or leading armies. However, in every spare moment... Don't just whatever form of excess is available. And it lasts or for a whole day. Control, right? Yeah. You got yours, Mail? Yeah, I'm going with uh, Conviction <laughs> 4, and my flaw is uh, Heart of Flint. I become a robot. Well, not <laughs> a robot. But yeah. Lacking all empathy or feeling. That's what it says. I am going with Foolhardy <clears throat> Contempt for uh, Valor. And uh, essentially just means that I know no fear. I will place myself at the forefront of combat. Thoughtlessly challenge enemies to single combat. Volunteer all for all dangerous missions and won't retreat under any circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> Russian into so meta. yeah, he's yeah. he's going to rush into all the fights. I'm going to rush into all the fights. <laughs> all right, <laughs> live free, die hard. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's page eighty-three, if I remember correctly. For what? The next part of character creation, which I believe is charms, but. We kind of need to do derived stats and stuff as well. Oh, we have what, willpower is our two highest ones. Yep, together, it's right? summed. Yeah, your two highest summed. Okay. You can buy it up with freebie boop, points boop, as well. Boop, 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 <clears throat> boop. I, I have seven willpower. I don't know what this means. No, that's pretty good. You're sevenly willed. You can use you can use, <laughs> things you can spend willpower on. Uh, do not limit break. Uh, to uh, get a free success. Uh, you can spend a willpower, I think, to get an extra die, but you might as well just get. It. No, I don't think you can. I think you just get an extra success. You spend it to uh, evoke your one of your virtues, as well, so you can get like up to like three or four dots, depending on the argument that you're willing to make. <clears throat> willpower is also good because it'll add to your essence Neat. totals as well. Um, okay, uh, so next, you guys kind of just need to really look at charms. Um, we'll so that'll that'll kind of like decide. Like, there's a bunch of them. Uh, that'll decide, like, your prereqs um, and stuff like that. Uh, like, what you want your dots to be skill-wise. Maybe, like, pick a weapon and some gear as well before you get into that. So you just know, like, you probably don't want to know at least what you're going to fight with. And we also need to record your uh, case, uh, your anima powers, which are for each of your uh, things. And you probably want to spend freebie points, actually, before you buy charms. Because you might be able to get some skills or abilities up as well. So, uh, well, can you buy charms with freebies? You can as well. I I generally don't like doing it though, as a point mm -hmm. of advice. Maybe like if you want like more health, it might be worth it. Um, so you have an anima banner, which is when your peripheral essence flares up, literally like a giant golden spectral form will like appear behind you. Um, it looks like Dragon Ball Z energy stuff. It can look like different, whatever you want it to be. 
<clears throat> um, and when you use like your anima effect, this this will always happen as well. So uh, the dawn case <clears throat> can spend ten motes of essence and basically appear have his anima flare up as like this huge terrifying thing that will cause a fear effect. Um, but we probably need to do actually we probably need to do um, your derive stuff and your motes just so you know how that like stuff works. So probably better to actually just go through the like some of the charms. First, I can like explain some of like the basic ones that you guys <clears throat> so we're might go want. Next, then yeah, let's let's do charms next, and let's also also uh, I'll show you what we find the page that has the freebie because you get fifteen freebie points, <clears throat> and there's a page that tells you how much it costs to raise stuff in case you need yeah. to go back and look and go. Oh, I can't get this charm. I only have this many dots in this. So you can either switch stuff around or buy it with freebie points if you want. I wish the in browser PDF thing actually had a. Skip page function. I also wish I'd gotten my book at my buddy's house this weekend. Freebie points are on page 87 at the bottom. So you can increase an attribute. You get 15. You can increase an attribute for four. An ability for two. You can get another point in background for one. Or two if you're raising it above three. A specialty for one point. Or two per one in a favored case. You can get another virtue for three. Another point of willpower for two. An intimacy <clears throat> for three intimacies are i need to explain those as well you pick basically it doesn't explain in character creation of course so i have to find the rules but basically depending on one of your virtues i, I think it's your compassion you get specific more even more specific things you care care about that it's really hard to make you act against uh so i'll uh i'll uh i'll find the section on that here in a second uh increasing your essence essence mainly affects some charms have a essence requirement it's seven points um it's all you also get more motes of essence which more motes of essence you have the more you can activate your charms and abilities um everybody starts with the two for free and it costs seven to go up to a three and you get 15 freebie points and five points for a charm or four points if it's a favorite or case charm and the charms start on page on page halfway through the book. One eighty three. Three. Two. Two. Yeah, it's all it's yeah. all around yep. there. Wow. So um most trees will say any of this skill excellency. Um an excellency is you can use it to there's like the excellency one, which is you can add a die per one moat spent which is one moat is really cheap uh, to gain extra dice to your roll. So say you have like a dex four, a melee three, and you have the melee excellency one. So you're rolling seven dice. To get a success on a dice, you need to roll seven or better. Um, <clears throat> you can get bonus dice, I believe, equal up to your rank in the skill. So you could spend three moats to get three extra dice on the roll and go up to 10. Uh, you can, there's also one that lets you it's a different charm. It's like the second excellency, which lets you spend two motes to get an automatic success. So you can just spend the two motes and then just get at least one success on the die. Then you could probably like spend a willpower and then roll, and you're probably going to hit or succeed. <clears throat> if you kind of want to be like good at something without heavily investing in it, um, just buying an excellency in whatever skill you want to be really good at is one way to do it. Uh, I like to uh, look more at like... Uh, uh, combat charms, honestly, especially for new players, um, and just generally buy stuff, buy excellencies and stuff you kind of want to be like pretty good at. Like I was saying, there's a third excellency as well, where you spend four motes. Uh, it lets you uh, exalt the player can invoke the charm after making a roll. So the charm allows her player to make the roll again using the new result if you prefer it. So it's a re-roll for four motes. It's kind of the worst one in my opinion. It's way better later on once you start adding like a butt ton of dice and comboing into it and stuff. And you can only use one charm at a time. In order to use multiples at once, you have to combo them, which requires XP, so you can't make combos in character combo. creation. Either, <clears throat> sadly. So it'll let you do stuff like a die adder, and then I like double my, I get to add double my dice on damage. The, the, the other way, the way damage works in the game too is you always get your strength plus whatever the Weapon rating is, and we'll get into weapon rating when we actually pick stuff out. Um, but um, you also get bonus dice rolled equal to the amount that you surpass their DV by. And certain charms will let you double that dice to your damage that you exceeded by. 
So you can go, like, eventually combo with, like, I get a die adder, then I get that. Maybe I add something to where, like, my dodge value doesn't lower. Because every time you take an action, your dodge value lowers. Mm. And you can flurry, and you'll start taking dice penalty on your actions and to your defense as well. So there, there's some, I believe, I believe melee, I believe all the combat ones have a charm that's basically, like, there's, like, a, usually a multi-attack charm, <clears throat> usually something that's, uh... Like, uh, will refresh your dodge value so you don't take, like, a really bad penalty. Like, for instance, here's Hungry Tiger Technique in Melee. It costs one moat. You have to have a Melee 2 and an Essence 1. Combo okay just means that you can put it in a combo. Duration is when it triggers and for how long. It prerequisites any Melee Excellency. So Solar Warriors make themselves one with their blades. The Exalt spends one moat and makes a Melee-based attack. This charm allows the Solar's player to count extra successes on the attack roll twice for the purposing of determining damage. So if their DV is a three and I get five successes, after the attack roll, I can spend one moat and instead of getting two bonus dice to my damage, I'll get four bonus dice. That's generally a good melee charm to have if you want to be a bruiser, dude. Hmm. Uh, I mean, like, I say just kind of look through them and if you have any questions about them, let me know. There's one weapon, two blows, where you can just increase the rate of your weapon. Uh, rate is how many times you can flurry with the weapon. So bigger... Weapons that do more damage, you can you can only take so many actions on one tick with them. <laughs> one weapon, two blows lets you basically be able to take more actions with a heavier weapon. So it's good for that. Peony Blossom will, is like an attack adder, so you can like make more attacks. But you also they also all have prereqs, and you, you can see the trees and stuff. And uh, they'll all have essence requirements and skill requirements. So how does um, combos play in? Like, the charms, like, they... You can combo them together. Is there certain like limitations to how they? We can't do it at character. Yeah, you can't do it at character creation. So, but basically, later on, you spend XP points equal to the 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 sum of the moat cost of all the charms you want to put in a combo, and then you can use them all at once. So, sort of like for, them together. for instance, if you attack, say you have hungry tiger technique, and you're like, I really want to crush this guy on this attack, but I, but he's also hard to hit. So then you have to choose between, okay, do I use my melee excellency to give myself bonus dice so I can hit him, or do I just see if I hit him and then double like my extra damage dice that I get? If you combo them together, it would only cost you three experience points, and you would get to do both, and it becomes a pretty heinous combo because you go, all right, I want to add four dice to my attack, and then I also get to double my extra successes on top of that because I have them in a combo, whereas I normally can't use them both together if they're not in a combo together. I mean, if if we don't really have access to them right now, that's yeah. Fine. That's I how that's how it works. Because I kept seeing like combo okay and some of the yeah. Combo okay just means that it's okay to that you can put it in a combo. Do you have to start with a combo basic? Uh, what do you mean exactly? I can't the combo basic keyword. Uh, no, you don't have to. Okay. It just has to be combo okay. There's no like this must be in the combo to have a combo yeah. thing. Um, also a good charm to have is ox body. These might be ones like later on you guys want to come back to maybe like while you read work today. I'd say maybe just pick like the excellencies you know you want. Do we get? I know you said this. And... Ten. You generally want like your dodge excellency if you're going to be a dodge guy. Um, if you want to do parrying, then you can use whatever like your melee weapon is. You can't put parry with like an arranged weapon either, so you can't parry with archery or throne. Only melee and martial arts. Um, integrity is. Good for social defense stuff. So if you want to not be convinced, integrity is like a good thing to have an excellency in. Excellency in. Um, <clears throat> we find ox body technique. Because everyone has the same wound levels. Unless you buy the charm ox body technique, which is located in the resistance tree. <clears throat> and I don't think it has a... Pre nope, it does not have a prereq. So you can buy it without having the resistance excellency. Um, I need to find out what everyone starts out with wound level wise, because it lets you choose a, f a few different things. Probably just a quick, like, easy uh, thing somewhere. How many charms can we learn? You get ten charms for free. Half of them have to be from your favored abilities, too. That's uh, why your favorite four, abilities are important. Your case or favorite. Yeah. yeah. I kind of just call them the same thing. But yeah, I would say you probably want at least four excellencies. One in whatever weapon you, or way you want to attack. If you want to be a dodge guy, you probably want to dodge Excellency. Then pick like a few cool skills that you would just want to be really good at. 
also need to look up uh, intimacies as well. The first we'll look up wounds. It's not in the index. Brilliant. Unless your character has extra health level. So first, you have one minus zero health level. Basically, if you're at minus one, you subtract one dice from all your rolls. Minus two for two, minus four for four, etc. So everyone get. So basically, you would fill in all the boxes except for one of the zeros. For what? For health levels. You might be able to click and unclick the boxes. So we only have one access to us, so we're blacking out four of them. Yep, correct. Get two minus one health levels. Okay. Two minus two health levels. One minus four, and one incapacitated. Any zeros? You get one zero. Two, one, one. Yep. Uh... <sighs> All right, now I gotta find ox body, which gives you a few choices. You can buy ox bodies up to your rank and resistance. It's basically the best thing resistance is used for <laughs> is buying ox bodies. Let's see. So the the excellency is dropped down. It's first ability excellency, right? First ability excellency is you can spend one moat and get an extra dos, and you can. Spin moats up to your rank in the skill, I believe. It might be rank plus ability. I could be wrong, but I'll double check it here in a minute. It's my favorite one. The The one for uh, automatic, automatic successes is not bad either. It's just a little more expensive. Or sometimes on two dice, you can get two, three, or even four successes if you roll two tens. So the ten counts in two, as two successes and exalted. Well, I can't go any higher... Uh, with martial arts without going higher in uh, the actual martial arts stat. Yep. So you'll start to hit like uh, parts where you need like a four or a five. Yeah, that can actually come pretty early on. Yeah. Because I mean, you also need prerequisite charms. It's kind of weird. Yep. You pretty much need an excellency for to get into any tree. All right. Let's see. Is that possible to do that now or? You just lock from that. No, you can you can spend your freebie points to up your stuff past three your abilities. How, how many freebie points do I have? Get yeah, fifteen, and it was like page seventy seven or eighty something, where it, there was a table. The costs. Yeah, six or something. Yeah, somewhere around there. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> fifteen bonus points. So let's see here. Ability. Oh, well that's... Some stuff will start having Essence 3, so you need to look at that as well. What is our Essence base? You start to... You start with 2 Essence? Yeah, it costs 7 of your freebie points to get up to 3. Oh my. Yeah. You also oh, do... Is an Exalted, you do minimum damage. Like, mortals can get so low on their weapons with your soak and armor that they just don't, they can't hurt you if you just soak past their damage dos they do. Uh, yeah. you, an Exalted will always roll at least their essence in damage, even if the guy like soaks past it. Neat. So you might, roll zero, you might roll zero successes on the damage roll, but you'll at least get like two or three dos. What does essence do again? It will increase your moats uh, your remote total. It's like the it's biggest... Like your MP. Yeah, it's like your MP stat, kind of, for lack of a better explanation. Because you see how all the, uh, all the, um, charms have a cost? Like, yeah. three M's yeah. or something? That's your That's your moats. You get, you get two pools. Yeah, your yeah. moats are you like your MP. Pools. And the, each pool is calculated different. Um, your permanent essence pool and your peripheral essence pool. Yeah, you okay. get more peripheral, less, uh, personal. Because peripheral has obvious side effects, but you get your essence times seven of motes from it, I believe. And plus, like, your willpower and something as yeah. well. It, the the uh, formula is yeah. there. Where is it? <clears throat> it's somewhere around the uh, the chart that's around the freebie point section. It'll give uh, you the formula for calculating it. But uh, ox body tech. So, for one, if you buy one oh, ox body... Is. Which ha you don't have to have an excellency to get ox body, but you can only buy ox body a number of times equal to your resistance rank. You can get one minus zero, two minus ones, or one minus one and two minus twos, 
which the three for one is generally the best deal up to a certain point from my experience everyone probably wants at least one ox body technique i believe the game tells you that <laughs> yeah unless you just want to get like one shot it it's still it's really hard to kill you um there's three types of damage in the game. There is bashing, lethal, and aggravated. If you played Wild Wolf games, I think it's pretty much like the same in all of them for the most part. Bashing hills the easiest. It's stuff like punches and blunt weapons will do bashing damage. Weapons with like edges that are meant to kill will do lethal, which is harder to heal. Bashing like an exalted, I think heals like their stamina every hour or something like that. And bashing number of health levels. I think it's like a day in lethal and aggravated is. Like, if you get shot with, like, a war strider laser or, like, hit with a meteor or something, like, supernatural. Yes, there are ways to get hit with meteors. You can be Sephiroth. So, I would be disappointed if there wasn't. <laughs> you can have a literal buster sword if you want. It even has little materia slots in it for hearthstones. But, yeah, I would suggest at least getting one ox body, probably two. It's worth it. Because if you hit incapacitated, you pass out. Even in bashing. And then if you keep getting hit, bashing will start to carry over into lethal, which will carry into aggravated. Aggravated is really hard to heal off. Intimacies is a term for things your character cares about. They're not enough to be a motivation. Characters start with a number of intimacies equal to their compassion. Intimacies can be anything your character cares about on a meaningful level. A cause, an ideal, a place, a person, a nation. Don't worry if you have a good idea for all the don't have a good idea for all the intimacies. Your character can start with less intimacies than her compassion if you're not sure what the character cares about. You can just pick some things and try to roleplay them. Intimacies are easy to gain and lose in play, so you'll be able to switch them around easily if you don't like the ones you pick. Sometimes they can be very important, such as when they are targets of magical effects. If this is the case, characters will generally gain an appropriate intimacy on the spot if they don't already have one. Intimacies are governed by conviction. The higher your character's conviction, the longer it takes her to gain and lose new intimacies, and the more secure they are against being undermined by social manipulation. Now let me look up on page 90. Yeah, I remember reading about that now. Basically, you can, like, evoke them to, I think, get, like, your conviction. That, uh, page 76 also has keeping your character alive. Something <laughs> where it talks about ox unless you have a very good reason otherwise, make sure to take resistance charm ox body at yeah. least once. A character can normally have a number of intimacies equal to her willpower plus compassion, but they don't automatically fall off. Storyteller can remove one when she deems it's less important to the character at any point after you wake up from a restless sleep. Or not, intimacy has slipped from the character's own blah blah. Players should not form and forget several intimacies a day just to frustrate the storyteller. <laughs> My character loves his horse, his sword, and his country. Point, that that's the point to be able to say. Not to gain like 27 out of nowhere and then just have them fall off every day. Normally, NFCs don't mean all that much. Serving them does not gain the character willpower essence, for example. Instead, they are a way to protect certain things the character cares about from socially adept characters. So they're important for social combat. While providing these mm -hmm. some same social lots with handles they can use to manipulate you. Intimacies are often the target of beneficial magic. For example, there's a solar charm that prevents a character from betraying an intimacy to a great ideal or society. Intimacies are very important, but the average character is going to have some pretty simple and infrequently challenged intimacies. Only really worry about these in a very social game. So pick them if you like them. They're not really going to come up, probably. That's what they do. Hmm. Alright, I gotta actually go back to the charms. <laughs> yep. Have any of y'all seen any other charms you have questions about? No. Nah. I may have uh, passed them right the fuck up to go to the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, like I said, I think you guys should just choose, like, one... Like, at least the excellencies for now you know you want. If you yeah, come back and really want, like, another charm, you can always drop something. I yeah. may or may not have already got martial arts. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's the longest thing it takes in character creation is to pick all your charms. Uh, I went ahead and I grabbed um, the martial arts excellency, dodge and stealth excellencies, two ox bodies... Meditation, Iron Skin, Concentration, and the Striking Cobra Technique, Serpentine Evasion, and Snake Form. Alright, cool. What does that one do again? Because martial arts are cool because you'll get a form where you'll just get like some kind of passive bonus usually. And then Ooh, you'll have the little style. charm techniques as well. Uh, snake Style itself um, allows you to use Hook Swords and the Seven Section Staff as unarmed attacks and blocks so you get to use uh, martial arts uh, instead of melee for those. Yep. Which includes artifact versions of those weapons. Mm-hmm. The Striking Cobra technique um, allows uh, me to add um, score to my joint battle roll. Uh, automatic successes. You get to add what? Sorry. Uh, automatic successes equal to my uh, martial arts score. Okay, cool. So yeah, you'll always be, at, when you spend the motes, when you 
join battle is rolling initiative. It's wits plus awareness. And uh, so you'll always get to add whatever your martial arts is then. So you get to go super fast, basically. And then Serpentine Evasion um, gives a plus two dodge or parry DV against a single attack. And Snake Form um, large score to your Bashing Soak. Okay, cool. Then if, because uh, the way he moves, if an enemy attacks him and the enemy can see the hypnotic motions, uh, it subtracts the exalt's essence and dice from the attacker's attack pool. So you might want to get essence three, potentially. Might Very be good. worth the seven points for you. Um, yeah, I had I had to get it for that, and I had to get it for iron skin concentration. Okay, there you go. Um, so soak. Let's calculate that real quick. Your base one, anyways, and then we'll probably do like items and stuff. Then you guys can probably like do the rest on your own before we play, because it'll be like choosing charms and stuff like that for the most part. All right, where is this ox thingy you were talking about? It's under resistance. Body technique. Uh, two of eight. Yeah, it gives you a minus zero, a minus one. Um, no, it's, it's a minus zero, two minus ones, or a minus one and two minus twos. You gotta have ranks and resistance. Ox body, you say? Two of eight. Ox Let's body. Do shit. Let's do this shit. you real. Ox body technique. Resistance one, essence one. Hype. Permanent. Yeah, if it's permanent, that just means it's always in effect. Hmm. Keywords stackable. Yeah, that means you can take it multiple times. Da -da -da. Great. This part doesn't tell you. I believe it's your stamina equal to your bashing and half your stamina rounded up equal to lethal. But I want to double check and make sure that's what it is. Oh my god, PDF. So jumpy. Probably because I got too many tabs open, <laughs> but. My poor CPU can't handle a, a, a PDF so file right now. So what is the negative 0, negative 1, negative 2? Because I'm, I'm still a little kind of... I don't really understand. Okay. That's the penalties that you take if you're once you take wounds. Yep. So first you fill in your minus 0 box. Then once you filled up all your minus zeros, you start filling up all your minus 1s. So on and so forth. Uh... So uh, if you want to not die, you generally want to get as many wound boxes as you can. Because once you start getting excellencies and stuff, a minus two penalty really isn't that big of a deal with die adders. So that's why I always, I always suggest, like, get, unless you're buying, like, five of them, get, like, your first three, I think, minus, minus one, minus twos. And I should have already told you what everyone started out with. Yeah. We'll pick, like, items and stuff that you guys want to use. And if you have mance, you also get a hearthstone as well. Let's see what some of these other ones are, though. I think most of the other resistant charms are, like, uh, disease immunity and stuff like that. Uh, the... What's it called? The dur durability of oak meditation and iron skin concentration give you, like, more soak. Okay, there you go. You have to activate them, or are they permanent as well? Uh, activate, I believe. I think it is activate, yeah. yeah, yeah so so that would be after you get hit. Yep. Is what reflexive means. <clears throat> what if there's anything that just like flat out buffs you can eventually get like perfect uh, defenses where you just literally evade any attack as long as it like if you have a perfect dodge you can dodge any attack if you spend the it usually costs a butt ton of moats you can spend enough moats to just dodge that attack if it's dodgeable they're on up there in the trees though yeah it takes a while to get to I think Scion had some similar stuff. But then there there are also attacks that I think always hit and stuff. Yeah. Which actually this one does too. And the defense wins, I believe. Yes, defense does win. What are we soak, uh, on soak, now? Soak. I'm looking I'm for... I'm looking over charms. I'm looking for how you calculate your soak just to make sure yeah. I had it right. I know how the armor works. <clears throat> Immunity to everything technique. <laughs> <laughs> I like husband yeah, seducing like dance poisons. is one of my favorite charm names. Is it? Is it? If it's immunity to everything, though, does that also mean he gives you diplomatic immunity? <laughs> yeah. Eh? Eh? Oh, it's rounded down. <laughs> so, uh, immunity. thank you, Google. Uh, so your base soak is if your stand, it's to your bashing is your stamina straight up. And it's half your stamina rounded down to your lethal. 
Hmm. And then nothing for aggravated. Yeah, nothing for aggravated. <clears throat> and then you can buy armor and stuff to modify it with resources. Uh, the weapons and stuff, if you want to look at them, are on around page 370. And armor's under them. How do resources work? Because they they'll, all have, like, they'll have a cost. And right. uh, if you have that resources, then you have access to that weapon. Basically. How does... But isn't the, is there a limit? Uh, like, can I just buy, no. Like, 50, no, oh. that's like artifact. Uh, you can only have enough dots equal to the cost. So right. if I had artifact 3, I could only have an artifact like 2 weapon and 1 armor. Co resources is just meet the cost requirement. Hmm. So you could literally like... I th it might be 1 under... I'll I'll check and make sure, but um, the biggest reason I ask is because yeah, you could just buy people other stuff. Sure, we have a value. Blah blah. And said they are rated with the number of dots and resources a character must possess in order to purchase them. Of course, the character is paying in Realm Jade, Guild Silver, or Paper Script. But most players don't enjoy painstakingly keeping track of every jade that leaves right. their hands. An item with the resources cost lower than the character's resources is an out-of-pocket expense. Within a reason, the character can purchase as many of the items as he or she wants without a strain on her purse. An item with a cost equal to the character's resources is a serious expense. When she buys it, she lowers her resources rating by one dot. Dill is increased through role-playing. An item with a cost greater than the character's resources is too expensive for her. Right. So, if you're a three, you can get anything that's a two. Right. Which I think most weapons are, like, twos. Well, those two don't have resources, so... Yeah. They can't get any. Nope, unless your character wants to be nice and buy stuff for them. Which, if you read the pregame thing, you guys already know each other. You're part of a, a circle, which is a group of soulers, essentially. That kind of like... The idea is like you have past lives, and you kind of often have visions about them from the first age, like who you were, who like who you were before you reincarnated and stuff. So you guys, like, your guys' past selves actually fought and worked together in the first age. Is the idea. You kind of, like, through, like, fate and the will of the unconquered son, come back together as a traveling party. Oh me, oh my. Hey, so, um, Mal could just uh, be an uh, asshole and say, you guys have what you have. <laughs> Maybe he gets you, like, a weapon. What's the items on? Uh, uh 366. Hungry Tiger Technique, prerequisite charm, any melee excellency. Uh -huh. But I don't see melee excellency. It's at the very beginning. All excellencies uh, are the same for every skill. Yeah, every Yeah, it's a generic charm. Yeah. Oh. A second and a third, so you can, which do different things. Yeah, you can add one moat per die with the first excellency, or one die per one moat, up to your uh, skill. You can get the second one, which is for two moats, you get an automatic success. And the third one is four moats, and you can re-roll a dice roll. I missed these. <laughs> You're apparently doing other stuff. <laughs> I explained them multiple times, so... I was reading a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a lot to read. So, uh, what, what these stats on the weapons mean. Speed is how many ticks you get when you attack with the weapon. Accuracy adds straight up to your uh, dice pool when you attack with it. In DOS, not automatic successes. Damage is how much damage it does, plus your strength, plus any automatic a or extra successes you get on the attack roll. So if I'm using an axe, I'm a strength three. It's plus five lethal, so I'm eight b base damage. And then say his dodge is a two, and I roll three successes on the attack. So I get three strength, five lethal is eight, then plus one is nine. And that's what I roll. And I get, I do damage equal to the number of successes I roll. Defense just subtracts from your defense values. Um, it doesn't subtract from the total value, the minus two. Uh, it's added into the equation that that determines your value. So items will have like a defense plus or a defense minus. Uh, your dodge, I believe, is your... I'll look these up when we do the derive things, but I believe it's your dodge plus your dex plus your essence divided by two. And I think your parry is your skill in the melee or martial arts, plus your dex, plus the defense of the weapon divided by two. You might get essence as well. 
they'll have the minimum strength requirement, the cost, and tags. Which tags, I think, just counts for, like, checking for charms and stuff sometimes. So that's how those work. Obviously, right. faster weapons do less damage. Uh, if they have, like, a slash, then that means they do a minimum of that many dots of damage. So a mace will always roll at least two dots, even if they soak all of it. Or a sledge will do more. Lethal is obviously easier to kill stuff with than bashing. Zestus. One of my favorite artifacts is the god-kicking boot. <laughs> which is a martial arts artifact. It's just a war column boot. Sadly, there's no items with the cost of dash listed. Nope, there are not. <laughs> You're using straight up fists at that point, which I believe is just your strength. Um, you can actually there's actually like different actions for martial arts. There's like punching, kicking, sweeping, and stuff. They all have different speeds and stuff. Punch, kick, and punch is what it's listed in the um, uh, quote unquote items section. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you got different arrow tops, different stuff like that. There's even non-artifact pistols. So Mal can well, have a, fl zero a, artifact a flame piece. Pistols. Oh, are there? Okay, they're, yeah. they're in the special book then. You can use a flame piece, Mal. <laughs> I don't think you get your strength on top of dam damage, though, with pistols. Yeah. Probably not. I think you do with the bows. Weirdly enough. Mm, yeah, dash, max strength, though. I assume it's not part of it. F is flame top. Does not add strength to damage. Instead, or listed range is the farthest it reaches. Yeah, it's the F tag. The F single shot. You have to use a miscellaneous action to reload the pistol after every shot. Yeah, I'm... I'm still unsure if that's what I'm going to use or not. Yeah, that doesn't sound super great. Armor will have stats for your soak, how it modifies it. Uh, mobility is, I believe, just how far you can move. And fatigue, mad isn't really going to come up, to be honest with you. Uh, it's more for, like, long treks and stuff like that. You'll start taking, I think, your like fatigue penalty to, stuff, to your DOS rolls. I think they're like resistance charms that help you overcome fatigue as well. And the helmets don't matter. <laughs> they're just for decoration. Unless you want to make them matter. Yeah, pretty much. So if I were to take like Shadow Over Water, for instance. Okay. And let's say I did a flurry action, which would normally penalize your yep. dodge DV. Uh-huh. But Shadow, Shadow Over Water states that it ignores all those penalties. Yep. Any penalties that apply to your dodge. Mm -hmm. For that attack. Yep. That means then the flurry uh, penalty wouldn't apply. To your dodge DV, yes. So uh -huh. you can flurry equal to the rate of the weapon. So let's say you want to use a... Da -da -da. Cestus is three. Yeah, a Cestus, for instance. Um... It means you can flurry three times. So, uh, first off, if you flurry three times, you take a um, a, th a three dice penalty on the first attack, a four on the second, and a five on the last one. Um, and then your DV goes down for every action you do in a round. So your DV would go down by three. That, that would keep your DV from going down by three. So it lets you flurry like a madman without worrying about your defense getting screwed over. But the, the benefit of flurrying is every time you flurry at, for every attack after the first, they take a DV penalty as well. And that's for the round. So you can kind of gang up on one person. Like, everybody can, like, flurry wildly at one guy and lower his DV to one. And then the big crusher dude can just, like, literally crush him because it's supposed to, like... That's how it takes into account, like, flanking and stuff like that, essentially, the game. You basically get overwhelmed. But when you flurry, you also take a... It's like full attacking. You take a, 
a penalty to your defense. So that charm would let you not take a DV penalty from Flurry. It lets you be a Flurry ma man, wild man, without having to worry about like getting hit back, basically. I think I'm going to switch my two points in followers to two points in um, resources, so that way I can afford some stuff. Okay. Did y'all already go ahead and uh, know you, your I mean, base soak? I can buy you stuff. Did you know your base soak? I don't know you just said. I don't even know what my base is. Okay, what's your stamina? Uh, two. Alright, so you have a two bashing base and a one lethal base. Neat. Yeah, my my uh, PDF calculates for me. Those will just su subtract, basically. So, like, if a guy hits your DV, um, he'll roll, let's say, like, non-lethal or something like that. Before he rolls damage, he subtracts your soak from that. So if your soak is with armor is like a five lethal, that means he only rolls four dice. So, like, when I activate these techs, mm -hmm. or uh, charms, I should say. Like, especially the combat one. Um, I know this was answered earlier, like, you can't, like, if some of them are combo okay. Uh-huh. Um, but we aren't able to do combos right now, right? No, Correct. you have to spend XP on this. Uh... Yeah, so you can't use multiple charms in one turn, unless they're comboed together. So you can't use your excellency to... Add DOS while also using Dipping Swallow Defense to keep your DV refreshed. Unless they were comboed together in a charm. Or a charm put together into a combo. So that's how that works. Um, I think there's some other... We need to do moats as well. Um, I was saying I can buy stuff um, for you guys, so... Salted... Need to look at the sheet again. So I think that's really the only drops that left, other than like DV. But you should, guys, should have a grasp by now what if you want to be like a parrier or a dodger, basically. The uh, uh, stat difference. I may have taken a lot of punching uh, heroes, solar hero style techniques. <laughs> okay, so you're probably a, a, a parrier unless you have ranks and dodge. Uh, I have ranks of so, dodge. Okay, so you're probably a dodger then. Okay, so, uh... What does Perry go What if of? my martial arts is higher than my dodge? Then it just depends. You can be good at both. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I need to calculate that first. That is on... Da, 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 defensive value. Page 146. You're gonna yeah. buy us items. I'll move my followers back then. Yeah, um, and the, uh, just, just, just. the the half of the PDF that I shared with you guys does a pretty good job of explaining how all the like flurrying and stuff works as well. All right, I guess is that about everything? Just doing the derived stats, and then we'll be good. Uh, well, I'm way far behind you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can do that stuff. Well, later. yeah, we don't have to finish it all right now. Yeah. Just... Uh, let's see. So yeah, dodge DV. Uh, your dodge DV is equal to your dex plus dodge plus essence, then divided uh, by two. Dodge DV or a they... Your dodge DV. Don't worry about mental. It's not going to come up, really. I know, because it has, um, I see evade, parry, and mental. I don't see dodge. Uh, it's probably under evade, then. I don't know why they call it evade and say dodge DV. But yeah, it's... Dodge plus dex... Plus, plus essence, plus any item that would give you a a, a dodge bonus. There, I think there are some like hearthstones that do. I, I think I have the items. Yep. Divided by two, round them down. Then parry is your uh, martial art or melee. Yeah, your dex plus your martial art or melee plus the weapon's defensive value divided by two. Then you can calculate your, you can calculate your, uh, I think they, the one I'm seeing has, like, the equations on there. I don't know if your guys' character sheets do or not. Yeah, mine does. Okay, yeah, so your willpower plus integrity plus essence over two. 
And then uh, your charisma or manipulation plus investigation, perception, or presence over to you. Uh, for, for the mental ones. Yeah. So your mental uh, dodge value, or, or parry value, I'm sorry. Parry mental defense value is your charisma or your manipulation, whichever sire, plus your investigation uh, performance or presence, whichever sire. Fight about to you. Rounded down for all these. And your dodge mental defense value is your willpower plus your integrity plus your essence over to you. Plus integrity. Yeah, because your integrity is just like, I'm not answering that question. And pairing is kind of like coming back at them with a, uh, like a retort, essentially. I have an evade five, a parry five. Um, a mental parry of two and a mental evade of five. There you go. Alright, then we need to do your guys' moat values. It is so weird that certain weapons are faster than punches. Yep. That katana, man, it's so fast. <laughs> Wait, there's a katana? Yeah, just curved sword or whatever. Uh, just It kind of is any curved like weapon, like bladed weapon. You can just you can kind of describe them, yeah, slashing weapon. You can describe them as like a katana, a ninja toe, a choke toe, a scimitar, or whatever, a, a rapier, or a, a cavalry saber. Um, all right, so you guys got get your fifteen bonus points. You can spend those later on as well. To be honest with you, um, if you haven't already spent them, and uh, your your essence. So. Your personal essence is your essence times three, your essence rating, plus your willpower. Personal is the essence that you don't give off. So you said it's your essence times three. Yep, then plus, plus, your, then plus your willpower. So if you're a three, that's nine, and your willpower is a six, you're a 15 personal. And then your peripheral is your essence times seven. Plus your willpower, plus the sum of all your virtues. So if you're a three, you're a twenty-one. Your willpower is a six. That's twenty-seven. And then your sum of your virtues is uh, all should always be unless you spent freebie points a uh, a non. So that would be a fifteen plus a thirty-six. Your essence three will six. I'm sorry. What? I have a personal of 16 and a peripheral of 37. Yeah, you should have a lot of peripheral, generally. I was paying attention. What was okay, that? Okay, so your your personal essence <laughs> is your essence times three. Uh, th th then you add okay. your... So what's your essence? It's nine, but I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to be putting in the left or right side. No, you shouldn't have an essence in on. No, I'm saying the total because it's times oh, okay. three. Essence times okay, three. yeah, then, then add your willpower. So what do you got? Okay, so that would be uh, 16. Okay. So I put it on the right side um, because I'm seeing that as a fraction. So so many out of 16 because you'll move them down to committed as you use uh, them. Okay. Now committed is something else. Um, basically just put like, it's just have like a what your max is and then probably beside it you'll put them as you spend it. Once you get artifacts, they require you to commit permanent essence to them to activate and attune to them. So, like, if you get, like, an artifact greatsword, it might have an attune cost of five. That means you have to always have five points of your essence invested to use the artifact. That's what committed means. Okay. Okay, well, I've got personal 16 on my left side right now, so just saying that, like, that's how much I have max. That's in your personal. So that's... Personal essence is the essence people don't see you spend. There's no, like, physical sign of you using it. So if you okay. want to, like, keep on the down low that you're a demon that everyone wants to hunt down and murder, then you use your personal essence. If you don't give a shit and you want people to know you're there and there's a reckoning coming, then you can use your peripheral, which you have a lot more of. The equation of peripheral is your essence times seven. Holy shit. Then, okay. add, then add your willpower. <laughs> okay. Then add the sum of all your virtues to it. Yeah, you get a lot, but it makes it 
it very, it makes you very noticeable. Yeah, and also if you're walking is... around with giant golden weapons and stuff, people also will know. That yeah, you sure. got so like a lot of people generally like if it's a weapon, they'll like wrap them up like the bleach sword or whatever. <clears throat> but it doesn't cover like golden action armor. bleach. By the way, yeah, I saw oh, that. So <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Um, that's like the base of Exalted, and it's going to take you forever, probably, to cull through the charms. If you try to read them all, you're going to drive yourself insane. Because there's literally like 200 pages of them. Essence, I think. Yeah, I got 37 as well. Yeah, everyone yeah. should be pretty close. Yeah, I haven't decided if I'm going to up it, my Essence to 3. If I do, I'll be tied with you guys. So. Yeah. It's pretty I good. Shit, can't charms. figure out why you would take a Cestus over a fighting gauntlet. Right. Resources, styles? maybe? Or are they more? Ex is one more expensive than the yeah, other? Yeah, I mean, Ryan and Gauntlet. So. Um, I okay, mean, the Cessus thing... has um, got a better rate, so you can flurry yeah. with it more. I don't understand. Uh, okay, so rate just defines flurry. I think both I times I've started at Essence 2, but I've bought up my willpower and my virtues. Yeah. I was trying to find well, what the crap, like, all this little information means, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, the book is not the best laid out book. It is. I am often in times, like half the time, I'm not even listening to what's going on because I'm just trying to fucking understand what I'm looking at. Right. <laughs> well, Oz yeah. was telling us. I said it's the crunchiest, it's one of the crunchiest systems I've ever seen. And also, like, not like a super greatly like balanced or designed one. Well, I, was, I know Oz was telling us, but I also know that he was telling things, like he said, go to Charms, so I'm looking at Charms, but then he's talking about something else, and I'm like, I'll just come back to that later. Yeah, yeah. When it's yeah. pertinent. So yeah, uh, you've got pretty much the skeletons your characters made. If you got your Charms picked, then you're pretty much golden, because then you just spend your freebie points and stuff at that point. Yeah. So, it sounds like you're... So, so what do you got, Tets? Um, well, it sounds really like you're going to be very much martial arts focused. Um, a five in martial arts and a five in dodge. So the idea is that he just kind of martial artsy, but he also have a three in resistance to kind of try to like take some. Uh, yeah, you want to be up close uh, and personal. <laughs> yeah, and pretty much he's gonna dodge. Like the idea is he'll he's gonna get out of dodge, and then if he can't, he'll just be able to soak it all the same. Yeah. Uh, just because I know that's always the position I always end up being in somehow magically, so I might as well plan for it. <laughs> um, I've never seen a not case tanky guy before, which is interesting. <laughs> well, and so uh, the sk uh, skills that I chose besides the knight um, ones to favor was martial arts and melee, integrity, resistance, and investigation. Okay. Um, and so, as I said, I took uh, um, the first martial arts excellency, the first dodge, and the first stealth excellencies. Uh, I also have a three in stealth and a three in awareness yeah. from the uh, knight. And then there's some ones and twos spattered about. Nothing gotcha. Uh, two ox body techniques where I bought um, the double. So I have mm -hmm. one at negative zero, four at negative one, um, six at negative two, and then one at four and one. Yep, yep. You'll be tough to kill. With durability, evoke meditation, iron skin concentration. So those are the resistance ones I took. And then striking cobra technique, serpentine evasion, snake form, and essence of fangs and scales technique. Gotcha. Or, uh, Do you have a, con arts. a concept yet? So it's like, it's like a one-word descriptor that kind of like sums up your character. Maybe like two words. Was it before he was um, like exalted or whatever? Or because I was confused by what it's it was even after. So you could might be like swashbuckler if you're like a pirate guy, or uh, like general if you're like a super like war focused dude or something like that um so kind of in the back of my head what i was thinking was like uh he has this familiar which i think i'm gonna take a black tiger just because okay. um because familiar three listed dire wolves and tigers as some yep. of the examples um but then he has a two in the cult and two in followers so i'm kind of like thinking he has like this shadow organization there like you not go. shadows as in like yeah, yeah. edge board shadow, but yeah, just kind of underground organization. Mm -hmm. um, so like mob boss almost kind of thing. Find way. mob boss because he's you know a, or like a, a, a assassin overlord or something like that. I was actually hitman. Kind of the first 
At first, he started as like becoming like the first head of like a, a ninja clan, and then there it kind go. of changed. It's not as ninja as it was, but he still uh-huh. kind of is. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. So I guess mob boss could be his concept, for lack of a better like, way. Like even ninja, nin, you could be ninja clan head, and that's a concept too. Honestly, because do you think that fits more? So, yeah. And then um, what? What do you think a motivation would be? Just Illuminati, I guess. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah, conspiracy. He's like, he's like yeah, he's creating his shadow organization. Yeah. So his motivation is to see the organization grow and thrive. Okay. So, and then what would be a cool anima that he has that flares whenever he starts using his essence? It's for previous ideas, and they really don't work with him. And now I got to figure it out. Yeah, it's it's like a cool like totem that like sums up like your character yeah. basically. Like my guy who my guy who's like the dragoon basically was was just like a dragon essentially. Actually, so dragon was what I was initially gonna go with with one of my other ones, but I think I'm gonna go with like a. a His was like a well, Western it has to dragon. Be more so than fire, Western. right? Do what? Or, uh, it has to be like bright and like. Not necessarily. Uh, I think not case ones can be like purplish or stuff too. I might be wrong though. So they still would make it impossible to stealth. Oh, no, 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 yeah, but, but my thought is that he, it would be like a, a dark snake, was what I was thinking. Like an Orochi it, it or something be, like that? I mean, yeah, it could Orochi's be like purple better, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, my point was that it it wasn't just didn't have to be bright, and, uh, like bright colored. I just wanted oh, to... Oh, no, no. Yeah. yeah, I think it's still bright. It, it glows. Color, right? Yeah. It glows like when it's Orochi. active, but yeah. So, his anima is a giant Orochi. There you go. There you go, that's cool. Uh, do you have like a concept for your guy met, yet, Mel? Nope. Nope. All right, you come up with that stuff later. Yep. All right. The name generators. Do we have to have some type of like really wonky name? Uh, you can if you want. A lot of exalted. Some guys have like normal names. If you're dragon blooded in your background, then you'd have some kind of dragon blooded name. They're like uh L five R, where you have like a family name and stuff. Um, the all uh, of the generators I clicked on, like all, like none yeah. of them have a normal name yeah. in any way. Some either. of them will be stuff like dances on clouds or very like native american-y kind of sounding stuff sometimes or like wolf rider or or you can just have a generic like fantasy name too you don't have to have like a weird insane name unless you're an abyssal then you have to have like a very like (laughs) edge lordy name like uh the princess of black thorns twice pricked or something like that (laughs) and every time they're uh Essence start to flare. They like bleed out of their case mark and stuff too on their forehead, and they look like goth kids. So, so there you go. They're the uh, the abyssals are the death lords. Used to be very powerful first age solars that were corrupted by the primordials, who were locked away in hell by the unconquered sun and became horrible berserk demons and devils that basically corrupted the death lords. And now the death lords want to rule creation. And they took the essences that were locked at the bottom of the ocean and corrupted them. So the bi- the abyssals are corrupted solar essences, and there's only like a hundred of them. And the death lords choose to exalt who they exalt and stuff. And uh, solars sometimes will become corrupted and become death lords. I mean, not death lords, but uh, they're called death lord death knots. Uh, is like the slang term for abyssals. So sometimes that will happen. So a guy, our, the last guy when we played our moral campaign to exalt, uh, he he was trying to become a solar so bad because you have to do something heroic to become a solar, and um, basically one of the death lords was like, I can just do this the easy way and just make you one. All you got to do is do what I tell you to do and be all evil and stuff. So that's what he ended up doing because he couldn't do it, and they regain essence by basically like sucking blood from people. <laughs> Because they're like the vampires of the setting. Or like eating dead corpses. So, very edgy. So, uh, so yeah, that's how character creation works. We're right under two hours. So, uh, a lot of this has probably been <laughs> pretty boring to listen to, if you're even still listening to this. But uh, it was interesting and worth a try. And at least, like, we'd meant to get together and basically make characters. Because if you're not experience exalted and even if you are like it was with me trying to lead everyone through this it takes a long time to make characters so this is probably not something everyone could have just done on their own very easily 
So, um, yeah, that's Exalted, and we're going to play it this Sunday, and the episode will be out fairly shortly, so uh, look forward to that. Uh, <laughs> the actual playing of it will not be nearly as cumbersome as this was. <laughs> so, I remember the rules pretty well. So, uh, all right, uh, this has been episode 44 of Podcast 5 Rings, your source of enlightenment in the realm of video games, tabletop, anime, film, and tech. Each episode of Podcast 5 Rings releases Monday mornings on iTunes and SoundCloud. Now talk about topic day by day on YouTube. With the full video releasing on Friday. We're on Twitter at Podcast5R, Facebook P5R Podcast. Check out Meta and them streaming at twitch.tv backslash PSO Flow. Mal and I are doing our Nuzlocke over at the Podcast of Five Rings, all spelled out, the Twitch page. So check us out there if you ever want to watch some uh, Nuzlocke stuff, which we're halfway through that game, so we'll be moving on to yeah. something else. Uh, we'll probably wait till we do our next Nuzlocke, so we might get on there and stream some. Uh, monster hunter or something like that <laughs> so uh until next time we'll see you guys later later Bye.